Alright yo, what is up guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how I edit my images from start to end. And we're going to be working on the Epson V600, which is a flatbed scanner that scans film 35mm or 120mm or anything in between. And so I'm going to be showing you the settings that I put into the software. Then I'm going to be importing those images into Lightroom. Then I'm going to go step by step and show you guys what I do and what's my theory or what's my thoughts behind why I do what I do. All right, so our first step is gonna to be to cut our film into three frames and we're gonna to wanna to blow any dust that's on it. And then we're gonna to wanna to open our scanner and also blow the scanner bed of any dust. And if you have like a little brush, then that can take out the dust and use that or use anything to remove the dust so that, so that it'll save you time in post. The film actually has two sides, the darker side and the lighter side. You wanna make sure that you have the darker side facing downwards because the lens is down here. Now you also wanna align the film with this square right here because this is what's gonna be shining the light through the film to get that good scan. Before doing this, you might wanna consider putting your film in between a book or under a box so that the film can be flattened out if you're not using the film holder that's provided by Epson V600. You don't really have to use it and doing it this method allows you to get the film borders. And now I'm just checking to make sure that my film is aligned with this window right here that's gonna be shining the light through the film. And so now you're just gonna close it, turn on your scanner, and let's hop into the software to show you guys what I do. All right, so now that you have your film in the Epson scanner, now you wanna go ahead and open up the Epson scan app. And for mode, you wanna click on professional mode because this is gonna allow us to have the most control over our settings. All right, and then for name, you can put any name and you can save it in any location. This is where your photo is gonna be safe once it's scanned. Now for document type, we have, we're scanning film, so we're gonna click film. And for film type, I'm, I'm gonna be scanning a color negative, so I'm gonna click color negative film. Now for image type, we're gonna click 48 bit color because this is gonna give us the most color density in our image. So when we push those colors to the max, they don't break. And for resolution, we're gonna go with 3200 DPI dots per inch. And the reason we're gonna do this is to get the highest resolution. Anything higher than this will just be more time consuming and the results won't really be that visible, especially if you're gonna be uploading onto Instagram. And so for adjustments, we're gonna leave that blank and we're actually gonna remove unsharp mask. We're gonna edit everything in post in Lightroom. So. That's the settings that we need. And now you wanna hit preview so that you can see the actual scan. And now if you go into normal, you can actually see the strip of film that we, that we just scanned. And as you can see, the black box is the window in the glass that I was telling you about that shines light through the film. And so now we have our three photos and now you wanna grab your mouse and actually highlight the image that you wanna scan individually. I highly recommend that you only scan one image at a time because these are really big files. If you look down below, it says 423 megabytes, but once you convert it into a TIFF file, it can be anywhere from 400 to 1.5 gigabytes. And so that's a really big file, so I highly recommend that you only scan one image. Okay, so you click on the image that you want, and now you wanna click, now you wanna go back to the other window in adjustment, click on the second icon. And so now this is gonna prompt the window with your histogram. And what you're gonna wanna do is put the blacks with the black, line up the blacks with the darks and the whites with the whites. And you're gonna wanna go ahead and do this for red, green, and blue as well as shown here. After you do that, that's pretty much all I do. And then I go ahead and click scan. And as soon as that scans, we'll get started in Lightroom. All right, so now I've shown you the settings and how to scan your image on the actual Epson scanner. And now I wanna show you guys how to import the images and edit the photos in Lightroom. So we're gonna hit library and we're gonna hit import over here. And then you're gonna look for your image within here, wherever your image is stored in your folders. So you're gonna import it. I already have mine imported and I'm gonna show you guys how I came to this color correction right here. So this is what the image, this is what the final image looks like. So as you can see, this is the before and this is the after. 
before it was really dull everything was kind of like brownish white yellow it had like a yellow tint to it and i wanted to add this blue color so that i can make it seem like it was in antarctica i wanted people to believe that she was actually in it in antarctica and i've been looking at a lot of images a lot of them have really blue skies and everything is super blue so that's what inspired this look and so i'm going to go ahead and hit reset and we're going to start from scratch so we can show you guys all right, so this is our flat image over here. And first and foremost, I'm gonna straighten out the image just because I like my images to be very straight and clean. So there we go, that looks pretty straight to me. Then I'm gonna get rid of these. Then you hit enter. So you go to the crop tool, you put your frame however you want it to be. Then you hit enter. And now we're ready to begin. So usually for film, I don't really mess with this basic, basic exposure panel just because I prefer to go into curves right away, just because I don't feel like it does anything for, well, just because for this image, I'm not really gonna mess with this because look, it doesn't do a really good job of, of exposing the image. So a better way to do it, or at least for this image, is just to start off from the tone curve. And if, you're, if, yours, if your Lightroom looks like this, then you're gonna, you're gonna wanna hit on this little box right here on the right, and now you want to go to your blacks and these are your highlights up here is your highlights and over here is your blacks so you're gonna want to get the bottom black and bring it to a point where you like it for me i don't like that but let me increase the exposure a little bit all right so i guess i am messing with the basics but usually i start with the curve i don't like contrast so i'm gonna lower that uh, yeah there that's pretty good and then I want the midtones to be kind of high can't really see this right here though there we go and bring down the black that's that's way too bright that is way too bright all right so this is the so I just added a simple curve to brighten up the image overall and this is the before this is the after this is a very flat image and I added some contrast so that we can get those colors to begin to pop out and so, yeah, so we're off to a good start. So that's our curve. And now we're gonna add some color into it. So I'm gonna go over here and kind of mess with the different colors of the image. And remember I told you guys that I wanted to emulate this feel and look of Antarctica. So I'm gonna mess with the colors over here and kind of see what works and what doesn't. And that blue looks pretty decent. Maybe increase the highlights. I mean, increase the blue. There we go, that looks pretty good. And now, as you can see, the skin tones look super blue, but we don't want that. So I'm gonna try to add some yellow into the photo. And for this photo in general, in particular, the highlights are like the snow, the sky. And as you can see, her skin tone, her actual skin tone is not in the highlights because we're, we were shooting this in the shadow. And so her skin tone is gonna be dictated by the shadows or the midtones. So this shadow, the, the, this panel right here, the shadows, is gonna really dictate her skin tone, as you can see. So you can see when I'm changing the shadow, it changes her skin tones. So I'm gonna edit this until I get to where I like it. Mm, let me see. Do it like yellow, like. All right, I think that's pretty decent right there. Mm, that's a good start. And so now, as you can see, the colors still look super undersaturated. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some saturation, but not too much, at least from here, because this can give it a very unnatural look. See, that looks really unnatural. So I'm actually gonna go down to the, so I'm actually gonna go down to the camera calibration panel, and I'm gonna mess with these things over here. So bring that up a little bit. Maybe to like six, let me see, five. But it also removes up here, but that's fine. But I, I like this, it gives it a little bit of punch. It doesn't look, the, it, may, it doesn't make the image look flat. Like over here it looks nice, but it still looks kind of flat. And that just gives it more dimension. And we can compensate for the loss in color here by upping the blue in the highlights over here, down here. that and now we have like this cool white cloud over here I don't know 
But a lot of this thing is just experimenting and seeing what works and what doesn't. There's not one way to do everything. I think that looks pretty decent, but I'm not loving the blacks. There we go, that looks pretty good. You wanna be careful not to overexpose your whites because that looks pretty bad. So maybe like, ooh, but I'm not liking that contrast there now. So this is all just by looking at it. <sighs> when I add some more blue to this, it's too much. Let me see, maybe like, something like that. There we go, that's pretty good. But now the skin tones again don't look that natural, so I'm gonna increase the saturation. Gonna undo that, increase the saturation, see what happens. We kind of lost the natural, it doesn't really look that natural anymore. Let me see. Nope, you don't want to do that. We can go on here. We can also mess around with the curves to get more color out of this image. So I'm probably gonna increase the blues in the shadows. So the yellows in the shadows and then the blues in the highlights. There we go, that looks a lot better already, let me see. Yep, that looks pretty good. It's the mid-tones right here. That looks pretty good. Maybe add a little bit of red into the skin too. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Maybe it's just missing a little bit of highlight. Maybe a little bit more black. And I think that's pretty decent. I mean, the skin tones are still a little bit off, but for the most part, I think that's pretty good. And this is the before, and this is the after. And that is how you do it, my friends. That is how you take an image and you edit it. And that's how long it takes to edit a film image. 30 minutes upwards to four hours. But anyways, I hope you guys learned something and I hope you guys liked this video. If you wanna see more content like this or if you want me to edit more images, please make sure to comment down below and tell me what you wanna see. And make sure to hit that subscribe button if you wanna support me and hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm so that more people can see this. And if you know anyone who is getting into photography or wants to get into film, please share this channel so that they can also learn and benefit from this video. So that was all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.